welcome to the July 24th meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board. And I'd like to have the other members of the Redevelopment Board, if you could please introduce yourselves, starting with Steve. Steve Rabalak, good evening. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we also have the director of the uh, Planning and uh, Community Development Department, Claire Ricker, joining us this evening. Um, we also would like to thank the members of the MBTA Communities Working Group who are joining us this evening uh, for the second item on our agenda, which is a working session of the working group together with the ARB. So thank you all for making the time to be here and for all of the work that you put in to date on this uh, exciting new venture for the town. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first agenda item, which is a review of the meeting minutes. I believe that we have three sets of meeting minutes mm -hmm. and we'll take them in order, starting with the February 27th, 2023 meeting minutes. And I will ask um, if there are any additions or corrections. I know that some of them uh, were received ahead of time and are reflected in the meeting minutes themselves. We'll start with Steve for any additional uh, changes or corrections. Madam Chair, I have three suggested okay. changes. They're, Let's um, go. Very small. Uh, page two, third paragraph from the bottom. Uh, the sentence, Mr. Revelock would like the removal of the tandem parking space. Uh, I would propose changing space to spaces. Yep. So that it's plural. The remaining two are on the last page. Uh, in the second to last paragraph, uh, Mr. Revelock reminded the board of the new section 5.42.B8. Uh, that should be 5.4.2.B. Just a missing period. Okay. And in the last paragraph, the chair asked for a motion to adjourn to town meeting. I propose striking to town meeting. I don't believe it was in session in February. You are correct. Nothing for the manager. All right, thank you. Jean, any additional corrections no. or additions? No. Ken? No. And I do not have any either. Uh, so we will uh, take a vote to uh, approve the meeting minutes from February 27th, 2023, as amended, starting with Ken. A motion or to a vote? motion? Yes. So motion? Yes. Second. All right, we'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And yes as well. The meeting minutes from February 27th have been approved. Uh, we'll now move to the April 3rd, 2023 meeting minutes. And Steve, we'll start again with you for any additions or corrections. No changes, Madam Chair. Uh, Jean? No changes. Ken? No, no changes. And I don't have any either. Is there a motion to approve the April 3rd, 2023 meeting minutes as submitted? So motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll start take a vote to approve, starting with Steve. Yes. Ken? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I'm the yes as well. The April 3rd meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the June 26, 2023 meeting minutes. Open these up. And we'll see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Steve. Uh, no changes. Jean? No changes. Ken? No. And none for me either. Is there a motion to approve as submitted? So motion. Second. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm yes as well. The uh, June 26, 2023 meeting minutes have been approved. So thank you all. That concludes agenda yes. item number one. And we will now move right into agenda item number two, which is the MBTA communities discussion. Um, I will note that we will um, see where we are in about an hour um, from this from this working session as per our agenda. If it looks like we need to extend it by half an hour and there are there is time that people have available, we'll do so. But let's take a take a time check around eight forty and see where we are. So with that, I'll hand it over to Claire. Fantastic. Miss, I'm just curious, is it okay to record this? Uh, it's being recorded by ACMI, but there's certainly nothing stopping you from recording it on your own if you'd like to. You. You're welcome. Great, thank you. So I think we're going to start tonight. Um, Ken uh, Lau and I have been working um, to put together a 3D model for some uh, representation of 
um, how this zoning might look um, from street level or potentially um, other other views. Um, and so, Ken, I don't know if you want to uh, present this model. Yeah, that'd be great. This model here is, oops, an existing model of Mass Ave and uh, Broadway. Uh, a rough scale of all the existing buildings, buildings there that are uh, right, yeah. So it runs from Arlington, I'm sorry, from Somerville, all the way to Lexington along Mass Ave and Broadway. We had this done a little while ago, and this is a rough uh, start of what the existing buildings are based on Google. Okay, so uh, we are th thinking of using this as something that's a model of a representation of what's happening on Mass Ave and Broadway as we approve buildings or as we use this as a study to see what kind of uh, massive we can do, um, we'll be adding things to it. Like right now, we're in the process of getting the high school that uh, will be done this uh, and in the end of the year. We're gonna have that place on this right now, the old high school, we're gonna put down a little where this is the high school. That's right there. Okay. This is the old school. That's the old high school. Okay, so we haven't got the new high school in there yet, but we're in the process of putting that new high school in there. And as buildings get approved and put in along Mass Ave, they'll be also put in there. So people have an idea of how this thing's growing and have how you see things next to each other. So we're trying to be cognizant of representation, what's there. Okay, so we took this and said, okay, let's apply. The, uh, the MBT, MBTA communities on top of this. So G is one on one head and put massing along here. Okay, can you turn that layer on, please, G? Yeah, this is a layer on. So if I, so this one is, is that the And this is an early, early start. Okay, so it's going to. Just be patient with us since we get more and more to this. So, for instance, this guy's here. Yep. If I hide the, this is existing. Yep. So, if I undo hide the, this is new based on. This is not where we're going to represent the next day. This it would, it could be potentially in 50 to 100 years from now. Zoning does not happen overnight, right? So, these things that could happen uh, along the way as it goes along, if it's built up to the maximum. They may not build up things to the maximum because it doesn't make sense. So uh, this is just a representation to see what may, things may look like on areas that we plan to have some sort of uh, growth there, okay? So this is just a way of us discussing and talking about what we have here. So whatever's here, please don't take it as that's it. This is what we this is what we're presenting. This is the first time many of the board members have seen this. So it's a process that we're using, but we're just presenting it right now so we can see it. And I'm going to leave it now, see if any of the board members have any questions on what we try to do here. And she's representing this, the street view, now it's an aerial view, view. So it's a way we can play with different things. And, you know, we can take out some of the buildings, uh, increase some of the buildings, put setbacks in, or bring it all the way up the street. Now you have this representation of what's there, as opposed to thinking about it or saying it and say, having someone's opinion on it. So it's actually there. So that's what we're working from right now, okay? No more, it's gonna be a wall. Well, if it is, let's, it'll show here. I mean, it doesn't show every window, it doesn't show every corners, but you see the massive. And that's what we're trying to do here right now. Can I ask a question? Um, one of the things that may be helpful for people, again, because we've talked about how this is something that will evolve over time, we're mm -hmm. building the capacity and that this takes time as properties change hands, etc. Um, you know, perhaps we could make some educated projections around, um, you know, this is at 10% build out in, you know, X number of years. This is what it looks like when it's 20% built out and then pick a few pockets so that again i think it's um you make a really good point that this is not we're not flipping a switch and all of these properties change over and you know in 2025 
<laughs> everything is built out to the capacity. So I, I think it might be helpful when this is shown during, you know, if we use this as a tool during some of the hearings, et cetera, to think about um, having a, a few steps along the way shown. I'm curious what other people might think. All right, so now I was waiting for you to go first. But go ahead, Steve. <laughs> no, I think this is a really wonderful way to help visualize it. And it does make it, it, it is a much more concrete way of pre presenting things than just, you know, saying it, uh, we're going to allow the uh, heights of this and setbacks of, of that. Um, no, I, I, I want to say thank you for the time you put into this. This is useful. Does it show us any actual recognizable buildings or just sort yeah. of the scale of those buildings? Um, yeah, there, we see, we see some of the towers uh, along Mass Ave. Those towers exist in Mass Ave right now. Um, but if they went into the street, yeah, if the they went into street view. Yeah, there's, there's the firehouse with the tower there. Yeah, um, so can you go to street view with the firehouse? Like yes, the oh, yeah. Can you put us down right here and, and do a street view there? Yeah. So, if you put the camera here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just to the right, it's back up a little more. We have another model also, while well, she's doing this, of a topo. And we have another model of uh, some street trees and power poles. It gives you a better reference. But for now, to so, build that on, we're, we're looking at a supercomputer right now. Okay, so this just, is a five, five station to have prison trees here in the street. So it would have this is a plaza. Oh, no, 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 no. That's all the retail. That's the, the firehouse. That's the firehouse. It's too close right now. Yeah, yeah. Fire house. So, yeah it's basically massing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. massing, so it's not. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is, so this is along the Mass Avenue. So if I, if I walk here, so this is a new building which is allowed for six stories, and then this is all existing. We're not going to change anything, and the, this building is already seventy-five feet more than six so stories, right? So if I keep moving here, we walk along the Mass Avenue. So this, that's the firehouse right there. No, that's a church. That's a church. Sorry, that's a cavalry church. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's a not yeah. much change on that Mass Avenue, almost a non to few buildings allowed to the six stories. Is it just going here? That's existing. Yeah. So it's not so smooth, but it gets some idea. Yeah. So this is the brown one is existing. And then this one is a new one, which is allowed for six stories. Mm -hmm. That's with the bonus. Okay. And we, right. won't, we won't go into that quite yet. I, I don't want to get into the details of zoning and all the other stuff that we're talking about quite yet. I just want to show you the model and what mm -hmm. we're trying to do here. Right. And then so we'll, we'll later on happening. talk about what we're looking at as far as allowable by, by right, uh, or some of the uh, bonuses we're trying to add in. All that kind of stuff. We talk about it and debate that, but let's not use the model for that right now. Yes, Steve? I was just wondering, um, what are the red, so I understand the blue is uh, what's, you know, currently under proposal, and the, what is the red? That's oh, the red oh, it's is existing. saying like this. It, when we first did this, some of them, the red was some, either like government buildings or, oh, okay. you know, this, this model's been used many things as we went along, and I'm just morphing it right now for this, and we can change the colors I mean, just give us a little more time. This is just, just starting. Oh, no, 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 I understand. I just wanted to, so red, in other words, don't pay too much attention to the red, just the blue. Okay. No, Correct. yeah, okay. 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 And right now, all the ground is flat right now, okay? We do have a model that sort of shifted this, so you can see the topo of the ground of the, of the street going up or down, and where there's, uh, let's say, especially in the heights, like behind it, the buildings are much, much higher, and it hits a 
has a, it has some steepness. We try to capture that, but it just takes so much to compute for us to put this stuff in right now. It's not quite there yet, okay? We, we do recognize that, okay? Just so, yes, Sanjay? Um, does that, you're, but you're able to do maybe like small renderings of smaller pieces, including that extra detail. I don't know. Of top of, uh, so like, you're saying you have the information to do topo or the topo is already in the model it's uh, a different version of the model okay okay um but but in order to go through the model and put some of this massing in yeah you, you gotta you, you took that uh, i don't know what you call it, layer or whatever off and it's it's, it's, it's it's it resides somewhere else so you can still work within that and my question is for town meeting or preparation for what for using this, yeah. we could then produce imagery that includes both what you're showing here plus the top of layer added back in. The wind that topo. Was Actually, when topo is almost a flat, it doesn't make sense if you're making tiny because okay. we, we want to represent it's pretty much very close to the reality. No, no, what, what you want to talk about uh, topo, yeah. it deals with the surrounding neighborhoods and uh, Mass Ave is not flat. Massive, but sometimes it hills and sometimes it goes up and, and it goes around bends. Uh, if you look at the other model, it shows it a great yeah. deal that way. Yeah. Okay, but we, we, uh, we just too, we're not that far into right now. Okay. And I'm not even sure we can get that done for, uh, <laughs> uh, for town meeting, okay? I mean, I know this because they have this in Boston right now, yeah. but they have a crew of like eight people and, and dedicated department yeah. and a budget to do that. And uh, all the developers use that as a resource. Yeah. One other related question you mentioned. So I see a couple of trees there. You know, what's the what are the possibilities um, in terms of including, you know, either trees that exist, uh, or and or you know, if if we were to change the bylaw to require um, a street tree every twenty five feet right. um, in all residential, like. Okay, what does that become in it's, 10 years yeah. or 20 years or 50 years? Some of it, in the block, some of it, uh, that was, I don't think it was completely done. Okay. Um, this was a process that was um, COVID uh, really put a stop to this, okay? Uh, and then we have a shift of personnel yeah. in Claire's department. And so, so it sounds like it, it's inconsistent. So it, it probably it's, it's is possible, some, but, right, yeah, right, but, but it's it, not there. But That's it was fine. always thought of, of having street trees along there. Yeah. It, it really made a difference yeah. on how you saw it, and it softens the edge. And then when you're down on the street level, you see trees and then you see it's it makes a big difference. Yeah. Richie? I, I can answer your one question for the trees. If you put a 3D trees, this model going to be huge. You're not going to move. Okay. But we can do the, put a 2D to get some basic idea what this yeah. looks like, which mm -hmm. is uh, doable. Yeah. I'm wondering if we could have maybe, you know, in time for the fall, just it wouldn't even, we wouldn't have to fly through the model or anything, just some stilts yes. that show the build what, out, yeah. the 2D trees, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Them. yeah, yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's something that she, in my previous life uh, as an architect, she used to do that really well by taking a a sketch up frame like this mm -hmm. and then hand drawing right over it oh, wow. of, of, uh, of, of a rendering mm -hmm. of the buildings and trees and street and put all the entourage in mm -hmm. and then you'll see an image of what that may look like but I'm not sure we have the time of funding for it right now mm -hmm. all right so these are all great ideas and we're just gonna have to see what we want and what we want to pay for right now Got it. okay and you know how tough that was just to get yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, I want to I, I want to make sure Jean has a chance to ask a question, and then we do need to move on. Yeah. So this is my concern about it. You know, the thing that makes the street interesting and nice and human scale are the windows, the storefronts, things like that. None of that is here. So when I look at myself walking down here, all I see is blank walls on both sides. And I sort of feel like if we take it to town meeting, and this is what it is, what a lot of town meeting members are going to take away from it is, oh, we're going to be building street after street 
of blank walls, which is not our intention and won't happen, but I think this could leave that false impression. I agree with that. And and that's I'm what I think. not sure we should be using it. Well, I think we use this for amassing, but then say, say for example, since it's up already, okay, you take this as a wire mold, and then you can draw in by hand all the windows and cornices and the setbacks and all that kind of stuff, and illustrate just one, one view. And, and you then, have to do something like that. And, then, and, that, and that's what we present. Okay. And say, this is what we have here. And, you know, this is based off a model that has all this other stuff in it. You know, you, I, I hate to say this, or you take a picture of a block of Mass Ave, where we know what it's like, and put in what some of the buildings would be mm -hmm. if they were masked with, you know, windows and storefronts. That could also be done, too. I, I think that will be a much better representation than what this is. Okay. Yeah. This is a great start. Any other questions, Steve? Jean? Larry? Thank you very Thank you, much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so I just want to mention one thing here. On this model, so you can see we do we put the setback on the top. So it's just making us more interesting. Oh, yeah. So that's also related with uh, if you do the zoning, you can always say maybe after four stories you have to set back ten feet or five feet to the sun. Yeah. So that's all can be, you know, done. The more things we can the further this will spend a very short time. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank, okay. awesome. Thank you very much. I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. Okay. So I'm okay. just going to grab the I can turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Is, is on the All right. So we have, as I'm sure uh, folks, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of you at our working group meetings before, we have an updated map. Um, we showed a map on the 18th, um, and we did a little tiny bit of refinement, um, and Util was able to turn this map around to us again really quickly. Um, there's not much new here. I think you can see, as compared to the map from the 18th, this map from the 19th has um, cleaner edges uh, to the south and north, especially on the Broadway corridor. Um, I, Yep, and then um, also cleaner edges sort of along Mass Ave in the center um, and closer to the height. So um, this is map is slightly different than the one we used uh, in the working group on uh, last week, um, but it is still um, you know very representative of, of what we've been working on and what we've um, been talking about. Um, what is modeled here are some of um, some of the uh, votes and agreements we came to uh, last week, um, at least in terms of the working group's recommendation, which is for the Mass Ave and Broadway dimensions, there's zero minimum parking requirements, a maximum of four stories that is not, um, we have not designated uh, feet, like a, a, a linear height, um, 10 foot front setback, five foot sides, 20 foot rear. And then you can see for the neighborhood, um, Again, no minimum parking, max four stories, 10 front, 10 sides, 20 rear. Um, we also discussed a bonus on Mass Ave and Broadway for those, or for a, a developer who's willing to put in a, a first floor commercial, um, they could go up another story. Um, for a developer who's willing to put in first floor commercial and um, affordable units, they could potentially go up to six stories. We didn't get a chance to really dig into the neighborhood multifamily and discuss a bonus or an affordability, um, you know, uh, a bonus uh, for, for, for those areas yet. Um, we, we ran out of time, um, but these were at least um, the votes taken and the recommendations made, including on setbacks. Um, so I don't know uh, if, the, if the board would like to um, discuss this uh, with the working group. I'm not sure how the, the board feels about um, the recommended setbacks. Um, or the recommended bonuses. Great. Thank you so much, Claire. Sure. Um, I appreciate the way that this is the way that this is shared. It's great to see some of the um, some of the, the policy recommendations starting to be overlaid on this map. Um, and I appreciate the the work that's gone into looking to to clean up some of the 
the edges and, and make the, make some of the parcels more contiguous. Um, I think that that's very helpful. Um, just a couple of questions I have as to whether or not some of these items were considered. Um, one of the things that I think would be interesting, again, it's uh, along Mass Ave and Broadway, we're very interested in trying to get to a condition where um, mixed use is, uh, is certainly preferred by, by the board. Um, whether a combination of a maximum of three stories with a bonus of one story for if there's one story of commercial on the on the ground floor and a bonus of um, actually an additional two stories if um, there are two stories of commercial is something that had been looked at. That was our vote. Our vote. No, one story commercial and two additional stories for residential. What I'm saying is giving one additional story if you build one floor of commercial, two additional stories if you build two stories of commercial. So we recently had a project that we permitted on Broadway that um, had that came in not with just one story of commercial, but actually two, and then residential yeah. above, which was a wonderful project. For a total of eight? Nope, for a total of no more than six stories. So stay with your six stories. Oh, I see. And so um, bonus, the bonusing wouldn't just be, you get two additional stories if you have one floor of commercial, but step that so that you further incent um, multi-stories of uh, commercial on the first and second floor. I think I'm not. Yeah, go ahead. We didn't think about that additional story, mm -hmm. original, okay? Uh, and we can go back and bring that in as talk about and discuss. Sure. Okay. Uh, what we thought about to encourage commercial mm -hmm. along there was uh, we allowed uh, projects that were on Mass Ave to have zero line setbacks if it's yeah. the first, oh, yeah. commercial in the first place. And then we, we started, but we did not finish talking about side yard setbacks, uh, reducing that uh, to zero. But right now we still have it at 15. We, we still haven't really talked about that yet, okay? But then, give it a 10. Uh, sorry, sorry, a 10. Yeah. So we had a 10, but we're thinking of maybe bringing that down to zero. And with that encouragement, we, we really wanted uh, to encourage ground floor retail by giving it a bonus of two floors of additional height to really push uh, the fact that uh, if you do do ground floor and you, and you push it up, we're, we're going to give you two floors of something that can be built. Um, that similar to what they're doing right now, uh, I believe in Lexington. Right, uh, and I'm, I'm suggesting to add another it, op option to that. Yeah, we could talk about that, but yep. I, I just think adding another floor to that, we talked about briefly, but not really, is uh, if someone was going to develop and uh, if they have uh, ground floor retail and as opposed to having uh, second floor commercial or housing, they're going to pick housing over commercial space right now. But in the future, they may. So, you know, that's something we had to talk about. And I think it's something we can right. uh, look at, look into. Again, I, I would try, you know, whether it's you leave it at a maximum of three and then you bonus two and then one or um, vice versa. I think you need to make it worth their while to, to um, take that option. But I, I think it's something that um, would, would would be really interesting to take a look at. And, and also, also the other, thing, sorry, okay. we also took uh, an approach of, uh, of uh, parking, which is always yes. a big issue. Yep. And we uh, we stated that we're not going to have uh, minimums. We're going to say maximums, and let let the areas and let the uh, let the project site having more parking will make the project work or, or less parking. So we went uh, with some, some of the other towns are doing right now in, in constructing parking maximums. Yep. So those are the things that we did vote for and have as, as encouragements. And we said we'll talk about the second floor of commercial. Uh, I'll let you um, Yeah, I'll defer to it. I'd like us to come before the group gets done. 
Uh, was this specific to the height bonuses? I, I have a number of things. Some of them okay. Well, why don't why don't we? If Sanjay has something specific to the heights that I mentioned, let, why don't you go ahead and share that, and then we'll we'll come to James. Sure. Uh, the, the one thing um, I would sort of say that we uh, did think about in terms of heights and thinking about what the the base by right thing was. Yeah. And what, the, one of the advice pieces of advice we got from Utiel was make sure that you would be pleased if developers built the thing that you make sure. by right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, would we be happy if we got a bunch of three-story, um, you know, only three-story residential development along Mass Ave? Um, I think it's a thing to think about as we consider. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that that's a fair question. And again, if we're giving up this space and saying that um, we are by right allowing residential only, we've already we've already identified that as something as, a, as giving up potentially an opportunity for commercial commercial development. We're adding that opportunity back in to try and make it as attractive as possible is the way that I'm looking at it. One more on, on yeah. Yeah, I just think that we took very much to heart your goal to make sure that there was plenty of commercial mm -hmm. space. And what we started with was what was the maximum height we could allow. Mm -hmm. And then we backed out towards what incentives we could give. So I think we were under the impression that if we really wanted to incentivize commercial on the first floor, we would have to give two stories for residential. If your expertise is different than that, I think we're open to changing our recommendation. It was that we were guided to believe that we would have to give that type of incentive, a two for one essentially, to get any commercial on those first floors. Right, right. I, yeah, and I'm, I'm in agreement with that. I think I'm, I'm stepping it differently is the only mm -hmm. thing that I'm right. asking to be yeah. considered. I, I just wanted to add, I'm Laura Weiner, yes. um, I'm on the Planetary Working Group as well. Um, that, I mean, the goal of the program is to add housing, that that is what the region needs more than uh, more office space. And I think to, to give an incentive for more office space and at the cost of that additional residential is um, kind of contrary to the goal of the program, in my opinion. Well, we also need to keep in mind what the town needs, and the town needs both, is, is the position that I'm coming from. So go ahead, Jean, you had some additional yeah, I, I mean, you all started by saying, I agree that the town needs both. I like the idea of a bonus of two floors in order to have commercial on the ground floor. But some of the other things in here are disincentives in that direction, and I'd like to have you reconsider some of them. One is the parking minimums of zero, I think, are a disincentive for people to do mixed use because mixed use requires parking and allows us to reduce but not eliminate the parking amounts. So I think that it's a mistake and I would probably not vote for something that does away with parking minimums altogether. What I think you can do, which would be very successful, is say that for the residential, they're subject to the same requirements that we now have for the industrial, for the um, commercial, which is basically you can get a 75% reduction in the amount of parking if you have a transportation demand management plan. And I believe that we can do that under site plan review um, so that that's a way to not disincentivize people to go to mixed use and not result in no parking where we don't have off-street parking. So my suggestion is take a look at that and see if there's a way to flip it so that we can use site plan review and transportation demand management plans to get what we want without disincentivizing people from going to mixed use. So that's, that's one. The, the second has to do, and I'm only sort of talking about the disincentives. I sure. have some other issues I'll get to. Also, 
um, the, the setbacks, I have some problem with the front yard setbacks. And, and here's my suggestion for the setbacks. If you have a setback of, I'm not sure what it should be, some of my friends on the way in suggested 15 feet. If you have a 15 foot front yard setback for residential, but if you do mixed use with commercial on the ground floor, you don't have that setback anymore. That's yet another incentive for people to do mixed use rather than residential. And if you look at Mass Ave, most of the, not all, but most of the residential has some amount of setback. Very few of the commercial have any setback or mixed use setback. So I'd like to sort of think about that and flip the incentive to make the incentive um, to go with mixed use because you don't have a setback, but otherwise require the setback if it's pure um, residential. Um, Jean, or, sorry, just a clarification on that point. Are you suggesting that in the neighborhood district and in Mass no, Ave, Mass Ave, Mass Ave. Mass Ave go to 10 or 15 Resi and zero mixed use. Zero mixed use. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say that now, right here. But that was our intention. Oh, okay. okay. But right. I, I, I wanted to you finish. Okay. Well, if that was your intention, great. It just doesn't show up on what we got. That's, That's fine. terrific. Great idea. Um, <laughs> the other thing we've talked about, <laughs> the other thing we've talked about before is um, applying the tree planting requirements. Yeah to, I'd say, not only Mass Ave Broadway, but also the neighborhood um, multifamily districts, too, which we can do, which is shade tree every 35 linear feet. But it also requires, within, in between them, irrigated planter boxes, which is now in the zoning bylaw, which I think is another thing that we could do in both Mass Ave Broadway and the neighborhood um, district. I'll say my other things for later, but that has to do with the the, incentives and disincentives. To answer your question, uh, yeah. we, we did talk about planting trees, and which is, is not in here yet. We did talk about that. We had long discussions about that. We had also discussions about uh, allocating enough space for trees along Mass Ave. And we actually, actually talked about removing some of the parking spaces along Mass Ave, along dog year actually give it a space for a tree to grow and mature. Uh, I'm a little bit against uh, irrigating uh, any vegetation along Mass Ave. That's against leaves and against, uh, you know, we should get trees that- Native species. Yes, yes. yes thank so you. I agree, but the, the current bylaw says planter boxes. Uh, I think they meant alligator bags, which is the no, bags- No, no, I'll show you Okay. But we we did have long session, but it didn't quite make it all here yet. Well, yeah, and well, and the one thing I would say in terms of the street tree, um, including of the tree trees, I think the advice and Claire can correct me if I'm wrong. The advice we got from UTO was that we probably would have compliance problems if we only did that for the MBTA communities district. Right. Um, but we would have to if we do that as a extend what we do today for commercial and industrial to um, across all residential, I agree. that that would be a, a way to go. And I think, I don't think the working group formally voted on that, but I think that uh, my understanding from the conversation that the working group would definitely support okay. doing that. Yeah, you're so, right. we so we can't do it as part of MBTA communities proper. But so we what we would need to do then as a redevelopment board has come up, that would be a separate zoning yeah. bylaw change. And I'll add that to my very rapidly growing list. <laughs> Buckle up, y'all. It's going to be, <laughs> I think we're up to 12 now. Okay, so street trees requirements. Thirty-five or twenty-five. I've well, heard both. The, the current zoning by law is thirty-five. Is it? I thought for some reason I had 25 in my head, but whatever the current is. Maybe your head is right, my head is wrong. 25. Thank you for the clarification. That's what I okay. okay, I stand corrected. So that's a new Okay. Do 
can you do the Five items? Five other items. Please yeah. go ahead. So what I like about this, other than what we just talked about, is that um, the zone would not be in any of the current business or industrial districts, since I was in China. We're going to have higher heights on the S7 Broadway than on the side streets. More of Broadway's encompassed than on the previous maps. Say that again, sorry. More of Broadway's encompassed yes. than were on the previous maps. Thank you. And it excluded the part of Arlington Heights where we're going to do rezoning. So I think those are all terrific. Um, I have a few suggestions that were unclear to me from looking at the materials. And I mentioned this to you, Sanjay. The idea of allowing townhouses um, in a neighborhood multifamily district. And I think it's possible to allow three to six unit townhouses where the um, the side setbacks and the back setbacks are the same as if they were a single, one single family. So we would have um, a six, three to six unit townhouse structure, 20 feet in back, 10 feet on each side, as, as you're proposing, and 10 feet in front, and allow it a maximum of three stories. We have, I think you have to do something like that in the MPTA communities, because the current zoning for townhomes is so crazy in the amount of side setbacks and open space that it doesn't work. So I think something like that would have to be um, written specifically into this. And I wouldn't put it on Mass Ave or Broadway, but I would definitely put it in the neighborhood multifamily um, district. Um, So I have, I have a few questions about the map, if I can put that back up on my computer for a second. So there are many places where um, the district ends partway down the street. That was a difficult decision. Yeah, so talk yes. about how that decision was made. So the, the model from, do you want to talk about there? Sure, I can, I, I can, uh, I can at least talk about this part. Um, <laughs> Util came in off the midline of Mass Ave, approximately 325 feet to encompass um, any, you know, Mass Ave parcel and then the two to three parcels behind. The idea is that the transect would be 60 feet, 40 feet, and then down to the vernacular that's in the neighborhood right now. So that is why, you know, if there's the, the sort of look, what looks like three or four, you know, there were five parcels there, that is by design. And there's, there, there are some places that, at least to my eye, seemed a little bit of strange, like at the corner of Allen Street and Andrew Street. Allen goes up, mm -hmm. but doesn't, but doesn't, it, it's like one parcel. It's two parcels more on Allen and Adams, but it doesn't get to the corner parcel. When, and that's one where right on the other side, I missed that one. Right Sorry. on the other side of Andrew Street, it's it's that. the MBTA district. It wasn't it wasn't our intent that that we should we should get that. I okay. Just didn't, uh, okay. okay, can you tell us again? I'm oh, sorry. It, it's okay, Kenny entered it. We got it. We got it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. And um, okay. and um, yeah. Belknap Street. I'll just use that as another example because he used to live there. Um, the side of Belknap Street that's not in the zone is the one where we gave approval for a four unit building. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering whether it makes sense to just add this side of Belknap Street. So it's. We can consider that. It's oh, just so that well, when we first looked at it, we did. I didn't want to change everything right, right. to this, okay? So I was mindful of yeah. keeping it to a certain square footage. And then if things grow and things may be better, we continue with this process but if I, I would I just suggested that because most of those buildings are already, yes. already yeah. so why put it in there it's already that way well because if anybody wants to do work or build one then they have to go get a waiver or okay. or and that would be like a that. by right so it would be easier if it would just be it's just that one block yep that's mm -hmm. like that that's a good thing so um I'm curious about if we go back to this page where they talk about um, 
scenario one and scenario two, scenario two being 50 units an acre max. We only have one scenario now. Oh, oh, you got rid of scenario two? Okay, I would throw it. It's not necessary. What are you going to do about lot sizes? Are you having lot sizes? And if so, what are they going to do? We are, we have not, we are not going to have like minimum lot sizes. I think Steve has a. Yeah, in terms of, I mean, in terms of dimensional regulations, what we've been talking about is fairly similar to what Lexington did. Uh, you'd have height, you have building setbacks, and you have parking. Um, in terms of lot sizes, what's, you know, we are limited by what's there. Um, and, you know, the size of the lot will dictate to a fair degree what's buildable lot. Is. So no lot size, yet, yes front setback, yes side setback, yes rear setback, no FAR. No FAR. Right. No. Um, sure. What about um, landscape open space and usable open space? In our current bylaw, because they're GFA based, they've had the effect of inhibiting right. family development. What you're yeah. So yeah, we, yeah. we so yeah we decided we left those out as well. Setbacks are the All right, so setbacks, the vehicle. setbacks mm -hmm. are the vehicle. Yeah. yeah, and that's how the the compliance model, like the handles that as well. That's correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's it. Um, can I ask another question about what potentially was considered as well? Um, we had an email from somebody with, a, I, I thought, a really interesting idea around the um, the frontage road along um, Route 2 between Pleasant Street all the way up to Lexington, right by St. Camilla's. Yes. Yes, which we have talked about, the potential of, of rezoning. And um, given that those parcels phase Route 2, is that something that the working group um, thought about including as part of this? Yes, and study. Uh, yes, we certainly talked about that. I don't think we made a formal vote or recommendation mm -hmm. on it. I think um, one of the things that, that Claire has mentioned, which I think is is actually pretty interesting, is if you took the map of Arlington and overlaid all of the places that we've talked about, you get almost Arlington. Oh, I'm sure. There have been um, great ideas from yeah, all yeah, over. Yeah. I'm really yeah. excited about yeah. many of the ideas that have yeah, come yeah, forward. Yeah. And, and that's including ideas from working group members and mm -hmm. staff and you guys and the public. Sure. Right? We've heard lots of great ideas from lots of people. To that specific idea, I think we ended up deciding to focus more on our high transit, right? High, our, our bus oh, lines. Okay. <laughs> the corridor. The quarter along Mass Avenue. The quarter Avenue. along Mass That's we decided to focus on. We decided yeah. to focus there and and yeah. Um, yeah. Right. My only thought in including that particular area is because of its easy access to Alewife and yeah. the bus line that runs down it very regularly. Um, so yeah, just just wondering if, if that had been discounted for a specific. It hadn't been discounted, but it doesn't have the attraction also of commercial business district mm -hmm. proximity that's fair so this obviously uh, we're talking about change for this community and change is hard so we you know focused on those changes that seem to have the most things we could check off sure and being in proximity to commercial districts seemed to be a high priority as well as having access to public transit bike path etc yeah. and i think i think or i would um hope that part of what the working group does as part of our, our final report is talk about some of these great ideas that we've heard from various people and you know suggest you know you all um, to continue those conversations, the master, master plan, plan, right? We're gonna be going Absolutely. into the master plan, continue those some of those conversations because there were lots of great ideas and you know the unfortunate reality is we can't do them all. Yep. One of the things I liked about this, to, to respond to that, and I got that mm -hmm. um, email also, I like this because it's really consistent with the 15-minute neighborhood mm -hmm. concept and sustainability, and that's, I think, one of the things that a lot of us 
have talked about. I also, and maybe I misinterpreted the email a little bit, but I almost thought the one about, you know, do something on um, the Route 2 corridor and do something on Park Street. I almost interpreted it as it's too busy for single family homes or so build multi family homes there instead, which sort of seemed to me as not the way to look at it, you know, and that, that, at least that was part of the message I took away from that. But I, I could read the part, which is why I only brought up the part of the email that I just want to bring up one thing to discuss amongst the board here, which I want to bring it back to the working group. Right. Uh, so we, we talked about organizing our regulations on setbacks. Okay. So uh, I want to see what the board feels because I know me and Gene looks at this differently. On the corner lots, okay, when, when there's property on a corner lot, both sides of that corner is considered front lot, set, front mm -hmm. lot setbacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have no zero lot setback, you have zero lot back on both sides of the corner. Okay? That's not what I'm, that's not the issue right now, okay? The issue is now, the other two lots are considered side yard setbacks. There's no longer a rear setback on the corner, okay? So, where that, let's say we have Mass Ave and then it turns down to one of the side streets. That side street is considered a front yard setback, so you continue to rhythm along Mass Ave. But then that front yard setback, that's on a side street, goes back to... It becomes a side yard. It, no, that, that, that That's becomes, what is in our... I know, but I'm, we're talking... Let, let me finish, okay? Um, so that, both are front yards. When it turns to a side street, because it's on a corner. So that becomes two front yards. Then, where that front yard comes into, let's say, it could have been the rear yard, but now it's considered a side yard. Then, then it plus into a residential or a uh, a different type of zoning there. That's the transition between a larger commercial space to a smaller residential space. And we've always talked about how to transition that to be fair to the, the residential and we also still try to encourage how that commercial space and corner turns and I'm trying to see what your feelings are. So I'd like to bring that to the working group and talk about that. I didn't want to just bring that up front yet until we, until we had a chance to discuss it amongst ourselves. Did I make myself clear enough or no? To me? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's an interesting question. I'm looking to see, so that I speak correctly, what we decided to do about that. We already talked about what to do around these corner lots as part of our work for these zoning articles. Yeah, we did talk about this with Ray when it turns the corner, but then when it turns the corner again, that's the side yard setback. Or is because it's no longer a red yard setback. Now you got a commercial space with right. full zero lot uh, setback and the full height, and then you go to a front yard setback, which is 25 feet for a residential. So can, I'm, I'm looking at that map and these parcels. So if you look at the blue buildings on the, between Trowbridge Street and Marathon Street, right? That's an example of what you're talking about. There's two corner buildings right there. Can you just decide um, that which which supersedes? So if it's um, we could decide that the blue building supersedes, and that would be its rear setback, or you could decide that the brown building supersedes, and that would be a side setback. I, I would like. Have to I got it right? No, I what would you're like. Saying? No, I'm trying to say is, can you wait to? For that discussion when we have our meeting. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get what their feelings are so I can bring it to our meeting to discuss it. Right, but but am I right in what you're describing as being the problem? No. no. <laughs> well then never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So you're trying to get to a point where there in a corner lot there are no rear 
yard, they're both considered side setbacks. That's the way it is right now. So I, I think I under, I think I understand where Mr. Lau is coming from. If you have given a quarter lot, you have two front yards, and you know what we want to ensure is that the other two sides don't aren't smacked right up against something else. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's that's the general gist? Okay. Yes. Because we're we're now but because the fact that it's no longer resident or commercial along Mass Ave, mm -hmm. we're turning it in now and mm -hmm. extending up some side streets. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to get a feeling for what this board feels and get their ideas so that I can bring it back to the working committee and talk about it and see what they're and you know, it's dialogue. And right. I just want to see what you guys think. And if I if I could just continue my line of questioning, it's this is really something that would um, you know in the blue districts apply if someone elected to do mixed use. If it was straight residential, it probably wouldn't you know wouldn't be a big deal. But with mixed use and having the zero foot setbacks, so what we really want, I, I think, what you're saying we should really cons think about is the transition from a mixed use building to a, a, an abutting residential. Building. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If I didn't confuse myself, I mean, you guys enough. I get it. <laughs> so okay. let, let me see if I understand. Right, so we have a building on the corner of Mass Ave and the street that intersects with Mass Ave. Mm -hmm. They're both fronts. Mm -hmm. One on Mass Ave. Let's say has someone on the setback. The one on the side street, the residential street, once it goes beyond that, what's the setback? Is that your question? I'm. Can you draw us a picture? Yes, I'm. This will work. So, the, right, so this is your corner. Yes. You're saying it's mixed use, so you have a zero setback, zero setback, but you still have the side yard setback. That's considered a side yard setback. And, and this, this is would be considered a side yard setback. Correct. Correct. Okay. And then And then the, this is a side yard. And then this, this has a 25 yard. Yeah. And then this is the rear yard. No, this thing here is like really encroaching a lot into that bill there. I'm just asking what your feelings are because we're taking this and turning it, you, know, you see all those blues and all the okay. other stuff. It's just the next step of evolution of talking about this. And I just want to see what your guys' opinions are. I mean, look, I can, if if you allow me to make my suggestion, Please. I would say these both are front yard setbacks, but we're, we're going to claim this as the primary uh, front yard setback. Right. Which is consistent with what we were yes. doing elsewhere. Where and, we then, primary. and then on the, on the secondary front yard setback, we still allow zero on that side there because to keep yep. the consistent, but as it Comes approaches to the side yard setback. Uh, no, we we taper it, and I, I, I would say maybe limit to maybe three stories or or something along those lines. Okay. And so it's not because right now, if this thing is true, we can go up six stories with whatever, or maybe four so we set back on it. But we, we have an edge there, so if we just if we just sort of <coughs> step it down, that's that would be my suggestion. But. I just want to see what your suggestion is. Well, we, that's, that's actually the opposite of what we're suggesting right. in the zoning bylaw change, which is to pick a primary facade, right. and that's the facade that, that's the facade that has the setback, and the setback is not required on the secondary step facade. Back. Step back. Right. On secondary front yard side. Secondary side. And we're a... suggesting not a setback, but a step back. Correct. Correct? Yes. yes. Right. Because, so because if you set opposite of because if, yes, because if you set it back, that means you're, you're eliminating square footage on the ground floor for commercial, okay? Correct. And I don't want that. No, I understand. So, but if we acknowledge the fact that there's housing there and you can't go up that high, so it's not like a big massing next to another, that's what I initially thought of, okay? Yeah. And I just want to see what you guys think. I personally don't see an issue with it because I think that that's what any building on that side of Currently, that's the condition. That's the condition that is created when you have a commercial building and a residential lot right next to it. There's no rear step back 
Yep. For quite a bit. But I can go up six stories right in that corner. You can go, you, you can in any mixed use project here. Yes, but I was thinking that if we have that, maybe we soften it a little bit and say you can't go up six stories on a secondary front yard but, uh, and maybe bring it down a floor too. So if it tapers down as it gets back to the residential, uh, that's all. Okay. How would it take you? By lowering the uh, amount of floors there. The entire side? I, I just, I just well, not the entire, but a certain distance. I don't know. I, I'm just thinking out loud. I was hoping we'd have a dialogue. I wasn't trying to give you an answer that you say yes or no. no it, well, it, it's a good question. I want to I want to play with it with a pencil first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm personally, I, I personally, I don't think it's necessary um, given again the condition that we see in other properties that are of that height when they abut a we residential saw, we lot. sort of ran into that a little bit uh, uh with that hotel project again so we have site plan review if there's a we're looking at incorporating site plan review and if there's an extenuating circumstance i'm sure that that's something that can be reviewed but it's it's counter to how we are looking at massing in other areas of Mass Ave, and, I, and I, I don't see the necessity. I mean, it's an interesting discussion because it, it brings up the discussion we had last year about do we continue to require step backs on whatever the secondary facade, right? And do we, and is it on Mass Ave or is it on the Side Street, that we do it. Let's talk about it. Now, so you we had, all liked We had Mass a line that was, yes, like the step the back. Side street. The step back is on Mass <laughs> Ave to vary the, um, the streetscape. Yeah, and I, I feel like part of this, I almost want the support. I, I almost feel like in, in this discussion, part of part of it is, is do we want to take the step back and move it from the primary facade to the part of the building that's opposite the primary facade. Right, right. It doesn't, yeah. Because, yeah, instead of putting it on the street. Actually, that doesn't, there's it, not a lot of precedent for that. Yes, I agree. Let's, I figured we should talk about that and give the Gordon for some guidance. Well, so, if there's a 20 foot setback, is there a 20 foot setback? between the six-story building and the three-story building that we see behind it. No. It's well, effectively, it, yes, because there's a 10-foot, 10-foot, so there's right. 20 feet between them. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm, just, I'm talking just really from the plot line. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... So it's 20, 20 feet. Between them, yes. Between them. Is yeah. that enough for six stories, or so three stories higher than the building next to it, or should they step back that building partway to five stories? What do you think? I think we should. Huh. I, I just architecturally it does not make any sense to me personally. So I, I would not be in favor of that. I don't know. Um let's we, I, I brought up the top one, okay? I'm going to ask G to get a little block model of that, okay? And I'll send it around to you guys. Okay, so right. I don't know the answer. Well, I, there's possibly another approach is that, um, you know, this would involve changing, well, the basic gist is saying in the scenario where we have two side yards and two front yards, Mm -hmm. Maybe we say that if you have two front yards, you must have at least one backyard, but you have the option of where you put it. That's changing the zone in all the other. Uh, okay. Well, uh, well, no, there is, this is, this is, an but this is its own zoning. Right. Okay. So you know, section 538 doesn't apply <laughs> and this other part applies instead. Okay. That's what we talk about. I've never. I've always, whenever I've looked at the zoning, it's always, if it's on the corner, mm -hmm. it's two front yards and two side yards. Mm -hmm. 
that's, that, that makes up the four sites. Okay, and that's what you have in a corner unit, a corner lot. Right. The reason I bring it up is there's so many of those corners, and, and I, yeah. just want, I want to just talk about them also so before we, we get too far down. Okay. Okay. It is a very good point. Right. And if we don't, if we don't have an inclusion, that's fine. We can talk about it, then we talk, you well, know, when I'll bring it back to that group, and we'll talk about it in that group too. It sounds like we've come up with three options at least. One is do nothing. Right. A second option is step down. <coughs> the third option is require a larger um, setback on that side. Right. Those are the three. Those are the three options I've heard. Yeah. Okay. So it's maybe you go to ground level, second level, commercial is a no setback. Then start third floor, which is the residential, you said that. So um, either way. So I think yeah. this will work this time. You, you wind up with these building with a bite out of them. No, no, no. I, I think you, you, you're, you're not you're misinterpreting that a little bit. Let me do a little thing. Okay, that's okay? fine. I find it, me, you really seldom disagree on anything so far. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm just finding that uh, this is kind of awkward. Let me let me draw up a little block. Okay, I'm having a look at it. And, and I, 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 I can sketch them off. Okay. Why not take it off the top? Okay. Send it to All right. Next topic. Steve, if I could, I'd like to just call out one thing that uh, we as a group talked about last week, but made the decision not to do. Sure. Um, sure. At our last joint working joint working session, uh, we talked about um, you know, basically eliminating some parcels around smaller business districts to facilitate facilitate um, you know, expansion in the future and parcel consolidation. Yes. Uh, we, which this map does not do. So it just leaves out the B district parcels. It doesn't leave out stuff around them. Yeah. Um, the working group felt that this was uh, more a, a task that was better suited to the redevelopment board. So uh, that's being kicked back to us. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so let's talk about how we will address that. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked with Sanjay and Claire last week, last week, last Wednesday. And one of the things that we kicked around was having Jean and myself, because we're not in the working group, do a bit of a walking tour along Mass Ave to look at some of these um, isolated parcels that are still included in the um, in the, the, the blue parcels that are part of the um, Mass Ave Broadway subdistrict, where there might be one or, or two isolated. I know that um, Kristen Anderson and, and some other folks have shared this might be zoned residential, but it's actually a business. I want to go and take a look at some of those. And um, with the most current <laughs> version of the map, and I think Jean and I were talking about okay finding a time to do that this weekend so that we could get feedback sooner rather than later. And I apologize, I would have done it this weekend, but I was out of town um, ahead of this meeting. Um, so if that's helpful, I, I that, that would at least give you some of our feedback in terms of um, any any parcels that are currently included that um, we might want the working group to take another look at, whether or not those, those should be included. I, I just brought it up just so I think um, it's a good question. No one would think it would have just been fallen by the way. Great. I appreciate that. I'm not suggesting that you do this, but I'm asking if you were thinking to do this, that there might also be random commercial plots that you might want to change to residential. Or are there no such plots along that side? That that's that. what we need to we need to take this and walk it. So both ways. Both ways. Got it. That's both just ways. what I was trying to clarify. Yep. yep, exactly. I, I'll just add that I think if we put in enough of the incentives and the disincentives to make it very likely that people who rebuild will rebuild as mixed use, then that makes it less likely that we need to be concerned about the isolated mm -hmm. Although yeah. it does, it, for parcel consolidation, right? You could, it could cause. Right, but that could still happen. Right. I mean, that's that's ultimately, I think, what we want to have happen is so that 
someone could potentially purchase multiple parcels and uh, of course if you have some them. in the business district where you can build mixed use right and some of the residential and ETA when you can do mixed use if you consolidate them and build mixed use right. um, I do have one question I know that when we spoke there was some question around the recommendation of the neighborhood multifamily front setback, whether that was going to be 10 feet or 15 feet. Um, currently, obviously, in the residential, residential district, it's 20. And we wanted to make sure that there is enough space that you could plant um, a tree or, you know, appropriately landscape and make that usable in the, in the front setback. So I'm wondering, what if any conversation there was around 10 feet versus 15 feet in the neighborhood multifamily? District? There was quite a bit of conversation about it. Would, would you like to summarize, Steve? Or would you like me to? Um, Go for it. Okay. I, I we, There was a lot of discussion mm -hmm. about that. Um, you, you, had, you have the draft minutes. I have the draft so minutes here. Yeah, I was just looking <laughs> to find the right, to the right spot. Um, you. Where is it here? Anyway, I, I think I can remember. Um, the discussion revolved a lot around not wanting to leave enough room that it becomes parking, mm -hmm. right? And and the fact that um, it's great, we all, a shared value is having the tree there, but just having the setback doesn't actually necessarily get us the tree. Um, was, I think, part of the, the, what I heard from the working group overall and the skepticism, I think, led to the vote that you, you see in front of you. And I, I would add that Teal also gave us the sense that it's very hard to properly regulate what happens to that space. And so they were cautioning us about having too much of the space that we wouldn't be able to ensure provided what we wanted, which was shade, green. Because I think it was definite agreement amongst the working group that, that is something that we want. Um, but if we're doing a setback, we want to make sure that we're actually getting. Um, I think it was that's where the conversation from the working group went to. Um, is that, yeah, that's is that a helpful? Helpful answer. Any other color? Or I didn't understand the answer. Is the answer is 10 feet? Or 10 15? feet. The answer is that the working group voted for 10 feet because they were we worried. You can build a tree, yeah. you can plant a tree that will thrive. Gene, I think the difference between the 15 and 10 foot setback was not great enough to uh, foster uh, a tree there or, or such. Uh, and also the lack of control over what you put there. So having a, that difference wasn't the value of that, of, of that committee, okay? Uh, and we thought that, well, no, I would say we, because I, that. I'll, I'll leave it as I, okay, yeah. for now, because it seemed to be the minority there, uh, about if we want to, let's put the trees out in the street and make tree pockets, you know, uh, out the street where the, you have enough, you know, space for a actual tree that can blossom, you know, but that got kind of digress because that's not really within the purview of communities but so that's why we say that's something we should consider and we'll talk about elsewhere but we didn't want to bog it down with what we have as far as community communities because we, also what we're trying to do is encourage housing and right now we're tying this to so, everything so tell me i mean you may not know the answer but tell me this. so you've got 10 10 20 how how many lots would not get built at 15 as opposed to 10? Any idea? Like what's what's lost with the extra five feet? Okay, let's say a, a typical lot is 50 feet. You have, and you have 10 on each side, so we, we're talking 30 feet, okay? Of, no, no, of, let, of, let of me, fundage. I'm, I'm trying to answer your question. No, let me try a different way. Okay. Right? 6,000, let's say 5,000 square foot lot because they're a lot of undersized. 5,000 square foot lot. What can't be built with a 15 foot front setback that could be built with a 10 foot front setback? That's why I'm asking. Okay. So yeah. you have 50 feet. 
it is with them, okay? 10 feet on each side, you shoot 30 feet. So you get a 30 foot front setback. I mean, a, a width. And then, so 30 times five, right? Okay, 150 times four. And then that's your square footage you're losing. But you can still build a house. You still can build a house, but you're, you're. We, we don't have any FAR, right? We don't have any. But you have less oh, space to build. We don't have any massive. open space requirements. So all we're relying on, I'm not opposed to this, right? Is the front side and backyard setbacks. That seems fine, but I'm still wondering why the five feet difference is a deal breaker. I, I don't think, uh, I want to be careful speaking for the committee as a whole. I, I, I don't think that, that the committee said that the five feet was a deal breaker, right? They went through the evidence of what they had in front of them and decided that their recommendation was 10 feet. Well, I, I, think, it, I think it was even, um, we went back and forth and back and forth and decided let's let's just say 10, 10 feet for now and it might change. I personally like I, I like smaller setbacks. That's that's why I voted for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with, with with Mr. Lau in terms of shade trees. The point the best place to put them, in my opinion, is in the parking lane. It removes some of the pervious or, or some of the black surface that causes heat islands. It gives them more space and. You know, it doesn't depend upon the sidewalk. Oh, and one, one last one last point. Um, if we are going to, if we do want to take the position that trees are a, a piece of public infrastructure, um, you know, then this is something that I question leaving it to the whims of individual property owners. So, so the other way to think about it though, is that trees do better if they're not in the planting zone. Trees do better. If they're in a front yard, because there's more space, more space for their roots to spread out, and they're not confining the sidewalk. And I'm not, I, I'm not sure whether we're going to narrow a lot of those narrow streets mm -hmm. that run into Mass Ave anyhow to do what you're doing, which would suggest it, which would be a great alternative. But how likely is it that? I'm going to build, you know, a three-family house, and the town is going to, like, you know, extend the sidewalk another ten feet and take it out of, and take it out of all those narrow streets. So, I, and you're right. We don't know what somebody's going to do with their front yard. Although we could try and require them to, to plant a tree in their front yard the same way you now require people to plant a tree in the public right of way. So I'm, I'm, ju I'm just asking because I'm, I'm trying to sort of understand the push and pull between 10 feet and 15 feet for a front yard. Well, I think part of the thing is, I think having this a, a tree box up or a tree island up, out in the lure of a, a park, it doesn't narrow the street, but the car would have there anyway. So like, now there's no car there. So it's just the street drive lane is still the same. You're not narrowing the street by putting a tree, a uh, tree, tree planting area in lieu of a car, because that's where a car would park. So the tree, so your driveway is still the driveway. It doesn't change at all. Okay. okay. So we need to see if the town is willing. To well, that's it. I think we have to make a commitment as a town. We want to do this, and that's part of the thing. I think what Steve said is, look, you're asking you public utilities, and you're imposing this will onto homeowners to do what the town wants to do or what other people want to do. And there's no way of us controlling them to do that. that now, mind you, it's great when they do. Yes. <laughs> it's absolutely great when they do. But, the, you know, it's... I, it I think it would be interesting to, to find out sooner rather than later whether the town is open to doing these tree extensions on a lot of the streets. Because if they are, I think that's a really nice solution. If they're not, then that's not really a solution. Well, I was on a committee where we talked about doing these dog ears and putting um, plantings there 
so that the, on the street water would not go directly into a drain. We go into these little islands there. Yes, and I think those are really successful. And it narrows the, the street crosswalk and it has planting areas. I think, I mean, that's stuff that we can control and encourage and fund, you know? And I think that's something, if you push that on a, on a homeowner, I don't think that's gonna happen, you know? Are you, gonna, are you gonna say, okay, you have to have a certain type of tree, you can have to maintain this tree, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just, I just don't think. Uh, oh, no, that's, you're absolutely right about that. You know, uh, you know, and, and, and what I'm also hearing is that you'd like, you possibly would like a working group to go back and think about this a little more. It wasn't a, it was very hot subject. It, it, it was, it was a subject of discussion and I, yeah. I think that all things being equal, the working group would love there to be way more trees everywhere. <laughs> we just didn't know how to make that happen. Great. I mean, there's, I just want to, again, thank the working group. There's so much work that's been done here and I think we are, um, Absolutely. I mean, it's great that we're getting down to this level of minutia mm -hmm. now. Um, I think that's exactly where we should be. And um, I, I'm excited that we've, we've gotten to this, this point. And I'm, I'm certainly confident that we're going to get to a, a space where we all feel um, good about what we're putting in front of town meeting. I, um, like I said, I, I think we're, we're getting into some pretty um, yeah, some, some pretty good details now, which is which is yeah, great. And, and it sounds like there's a consensus. Yes, we want to amend the zoning bylaws so street trees are required with all. Yes, I now have that on the list. Right. So we're, we've gone there. So we're now with you know should the front yard be another place? Or not? One thing we haven't mentioned, um, yes. I don't think explicitly as part of this, that we did include as part of our bonuses was um, a, an extra story if they um, surpassed the um, minimum affordable housing requirement. I don't think we've mentioned that no, today. So, that so for I'm both for you guys so and for the public, that is a bonus that we um, I think we'll, we'll include in our recommendations. We have not picked a, a, a um, the, the amount beyond the 15% that would trigger that. I think we need a little more pencil sharpening to, to do that. Um, but we've, we've indicated that we would like to include an extra story bonus um, for that. So so if we start at four stories for a building and two stories for mixed use and one so, story. No, no, so, so, so we also so, voted about stacking. So, so and so if we had, if um, not to exceed the maximum for the zone, which is right six and six and four. Um, so, if we had two different one, um, two different one-story bonuses, right? You could um, stack them together, but because of the way the commercial bonus we talked about works, you would you would choose. You could either do the affordable housing or the. Yeah, there was there was actually a third bonus. Oh yes, yeah. yes. So of the of the ones that we had discussed were. Two stories, two story. Um, you know, and we're starting with a base of oh, oh a four story by right. This is Mass Avenue Broadway. Mass Avenue Broadway. 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 Mass Avenue Broadway. Yep. Um, two stories for ground floor commercial, oh. one story for extra affordable housing, and you know specifics not worked out yet, but one story for providing publicly access accessible open space. Right. You know, kind of an easement, but. The height limit on Mass Ave was we voted six stories, and I believe for five, Broadway for five. Yeah. five yes. Broadway for five. So you could only stack that up to six or five stories on the respective corridors. Just a minute, what do you want? So Broadway's five. Mm -hmm. yes. I didn't see that yet. Yeah, that's old. This yeah. is old. This is what just came. With, uh, no, because we only have one now. We don't have two. So we didn't see it. So if Broadway's and we want to give two story bonuses for no, you, mixed use, then is the base three? Well, that's a problem, right? It was a, the discussion amongst the working group of 
should Broadway, there, and there was, this, I believe we had a, a somewhat split vote on whether Broadway should be five or not, uh, or five or six. Um, so that's the, the history of, of how we got to where that was. So, but we're left then with you need one extra floor to do mixed use. Plus your 10 foot setback, yes. It doesn't seem like enough of an incentive. Yeah, I wonder if it should be a baseline of three on Broadway and then two to get up to five. Then we might only get five. Well, no, then we'll get five. You'll get five. If they'll get five with commercial and down floor. Right, but if they don't choose to take that incentive, they can just get three. Which is essentially what they can do. No. They can build two. They can two build and two, and half. Half. two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay, that Dolmer right. right. exception. Right. Yeah. So we didn't okay. think that that was right. much well, extra. I'd say another thing to take back. So, well, well we, 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 may, I, may I, I think the bonus thing in general is something that needs to be written we need to take down. It. Right. Yeah. And, um, I, I don't know if that one just wasn't uploaded, but the latest one that was uploaded was the two. Still has a scenario one and scenario yeah. two, so I don't think so we really? have the, yeah. the latest one. And, and, and you mentioned four stories in the neighborhood of the family district. Mm -hmm. What we see here is three stories. Yeah, yeah they the, don't have this map. Which is, which is fine. Okay, I know sorry. things are moving fast. Nobody's upset sorry, about sorry, it. No, sorry. it's totally fine. I think that um, we should just make sure that we follow up with right. that would be helpful for us right. as so that we can give you better feedback. Right. Well that's yeah. what they corrected for tomorrow. Perfect. But, uh, I just want to clarify for you. So you're you're saying that we should have on Broadway three stories as of right and with commercial on a lower floor you get still get two floors bonus so there's a total of five. So we're still maintaining five floors because we don't want it six stories on Broadway. But we're we're still trying to encourage ground floor commercial on there so that uh, so as of right is three. Well, that's what I'm just I, uh, that's what I'm just want to be clear about. Yeah. Um, the other question I would ask it the other way around yeah. right would you prefer us to make Broadway six? Yes. Right I think th there was there are certainly again there was not consensus among the working group right um, split on, on that right so um, I mean, I think it's okay in some way for the working group to give us something, not now, but say, here are two ways to deal with Broadway, five or six, and, you know, so A or B, you decide. But Jean, what I'm it's hearing okay is that. that you like the two-story incentive for mixed use. I think we do. So in yes. the modeling, we need to make, make sure that that's what we represent, and then the question yeah. is, how high do you go? Is, yeah, is it a base? Is it a base three right. or a max right. six? Right, got it. And, and um, the other thing, so what we saw was neighborhood multifamily dimensions max three stories, and it's now four. Can someone just explain what happened? Yeah, is there a, a bonus for four, or is it max four? It's a max four. Okay. We felt like the existing is essentially three, right, in terms of height, right? Um, and so we should be, go ahead. Steve. Yeah, so it's the, just sort of in, in a big shape kind of way, the idea was we were thinking more along the lines of having, you know, five or six stories on the borders, then it steps down to the four stories for the neighborhood districts, and then it steps down to three, you know, which is our two and a half story zone. So no half stories on Correct. No half stories. Yeah. Did you have anything else, Claire? Right. You point out? No, I have nothing else to add. I just <clears throat> want to make it clear the map that I handed out tonight is the map that you see on the screen. It's a map dated uh, July 19th. I think the board has been um, with it, has been using a July 18th map. They're not very different. Um, we can certainly have conversations about you know both of them at the same time, you know, conceptually. Um, but I want to want folks to know that. The map that is linked in the agenda is the most recent map.
Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Claire, actually, I think that the one, we might have to have Jennifer update that, because okay. the one on the agenda is um, different. the 18th. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That will be a ticket tomorrow. Great. Thank you. And he wouldn't mind asking her to email that to the board so that Jean oh, and I have that most yes, current one when we do our walk and That would be great. Okay. Um, anything else from the working group before we um, move to public comment? No. Thank okay. you very much. This has been thank you. Yeah, thank you. really good to, to collaborate. So, pardon? I said thank you for coming here. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> And we'll see, hopefully, some of you um, tomorrow night as well is for our, our public is forum. It listed as a, it's listed as a, you can come, you can come Gene. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. It's on my calendar. City Hall. Right. Yep. Town Hall. We're looking Town forward hall. to. Uh, Town. Sorry. We're, we're looking forward to. We're not the city yet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to hearing from the public. Great. Thank you so much. All right. So that's, this time we'll close agenda item number two and now um, open it up for open forum. So. Any member of the public wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Um, when I call on you, I ask that you please will use the um, chair right next to Laura. We do need you to be in the front row so that the mics pick you up. Um, you'll have up to three minutes to address the board. We don't typically answer every question. As they come forward, we kind of compile them so that we can answer them all at once. And um, we'll ask you to please introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. So we'll start with Wendy. We now work Kevin's Fortune Place. A um, couple of comments. I'll try to be very brief. I just want to address Mr. Benson's speak out. I'm sorry. I want to address Mr. Benson's comments about the setback and the trees. In amongst all of the discussion, Util's comment was that um, a 10 foot setback will not support a large tree. It would support smaller ornamental trees, but that you would have to have at least a 15-foot setback to support a larger tree. So related to that, I want to propose maybe a different way of looking at setbacks. Um, I don't know if you guys have really thought about it. Right now we're talking about no setbacks for the taller buildings and then setbacks for the lower density buildings. And tonight I walked past the Kenwood 990 Mass Ave this is an eight-story building, but you don't really notice it. I stepped off the setback tonight. It's 30 feet. It has large locust trees in it. It's got shrubs. It's got green grass. By contrast, when you walk past some of our one, two, and three-story storefronts, they have a zero setback, but it doesn't feel oppressive because they're not so tall, and you can see the sky. I was in um, East Arlington this afternoon, so I was really thinking a lot about setbacks versus building height. So maybe a, a different way to, to think about how those things interact. And my final comment is I have sent an invitation to the working group, to Director Ricker, and to the members of the ARB to visit my street. Mm -hmm. And once again, I want to assure you that I'm not trying to you know, make myself special, but I'm really concerned about how non-conforming lots and private ways work in this because as we've heard over and over the point of all of this is to actually build housing so if we're including properties within the zones where development is not feasible we're we're working against ourselves my side of the street every lot is 3800 square feet and it is now the entire street is zoned for four-story structures we don't have curbs we don't have sidewalks there is inadequate parking already. The house next to me does not have a driveway. And because of the grade, there is no way to put a driveway there. So again, I really, really urge, I understand the time constraints. I know that you're all volunteers with real lives, but there's got to be some way to do a parcel by parcel visit, even if it's in a party van that you guys all get together and drive down these streets. But there's got to, there's got to be a way to see really truly what is included in these districts. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right, uh, anyone else? <coughs> Thank you. Um, my name is
Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street, Arlington, member of the Town Tree Committee and the Gaslit Task Force, and Town Meeting member from Precinct 3. Uh, a couple of notes about uh, what the consultants, uh, the UTO consultants said at the uh, working group meeting last week. Uh, what Brunel said that um, he said you need a 15 foot setback for a tree. Um, the other thing he said was that you can prohibit parking in the setback. So that shouldn't be a reason to not have a 10 or 15, whatever size setback you want. Um, I'm a member of Green Streets Arlington. Green Streets Arlington is a group we formed recently to advocate for tree canopies, healthy streetscapes, and open space to be in the MBTA zoning package for town meeting in fall. We support multifamily housing mandates and we want to help the past town meeting. However, right now there are gaps in the MBTA zoning plans and that there are no provisions to help mitigate climate change, moderate heat islands, enrich Arlington's natural streetscapes, preserve or increase the tree canopy, or provide assess accessible open spaces. We believe it's urgent as the climate gets hotter, wetter, and more extreme that we fill these gaps in the most significant zoning that Arlington will see in decades. For example, we ask for much more room for trees in the MBTA zoning maps. Trees are not a nice to have. They are a have to have for a healthy, livable community for decades to come. Why is that? Trees absorb carbon and other pollutants from the air and give up oxygen for us to breathe. Their roots hold water, helping to prevent neighborhood flooding from heavy rains sure to increase as the years go by. They offer cooling shade, so as the climate warms, we can still enjoy being outside and seeing our neighbors. They help to reduce energy use by protecting buildings from the hot summer sun and the cold winter winds. They provide habitat for our precious birds and wildlife, which have already suffered loss of habitat. They add grace and beauty to our neighborhoods and increase property values. We ask that our town specialists who focus on stormwater management, open space, and tree canopy, such as our town engineer and our tree warden, be consulted in the drawing of the zoning maps. We ask that in modeling the MBTA districts, use the planners use town tools already in place, such as the street tree inventory, the tree wardens list of plantable and unplantable tree spaces, locations of large volume gas leaks which kill trees, locations of overhead utility lines which preclude planting of large shade trees in the, along the sidewalk and heat maps. Given town meetings impressive record of pro-environmental quotes, we believe the MBTA zoning package will pass town meeting only if it has um, the, the tree canopies, green streetscapes, and open space necessary for a healthy environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Please. Elizabeth Carr Jones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. The, um, the HPC yeah. is very loud. It's hard to get over. Normally, people can hear me. So I'm no, I know. So I, this is a sorry. challenging I'll, room. So I'll thank start you. Again. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Carr Jones, One Lee High Street, co-chair of the Open Space Committee, and Precinct 14 Town Meeting member. Tonight, I'm speaking as part of Green Streets Arlington, a group advocating for tree canopies, healthy streetscapes, and open space to be part of this MBTA zoning package. My role tonight is to speak to the fact that Arlington residents have consistently given high priority to the sustainable actions we're advocating, a fact that is reflected in our planning documents and bylaws. Town goal in Arlington's master plan reads, the environment, recognizing the fragility of our open natural resources, we must ensure that Arlington's residential areas, commercial centers, and infrastructure are developed in harmony with environmental concerns. Goal number one in Arlington's open space and recreation plan reads, protect the natural environment to retain its important functions and values and help Arlington adapt to and mitigate climate change. 
Arlington's tree protection and preservation bylaw reads, preservation of the tree canopy and planting of replacement trees is essential to preserving the character and aesthetic appearance of the town and maintaining quality of life and the environment in the town. Arlington's net zero action plan states, by an overwhelming majority, respondents view climate change as a serious crisis, with 87% of respondents rating climate change as extremely important to them personally. A high priority measure for net zero buildings also promotes the planting of trees on private property. Arlington Housing Arlington's housing production plan's five-year plan specifies equitable access to shared green spaces and healthy living environment as a priority. A recent report exploring Arlington's urban ecology stated that trees have been widely recognized as the main provider of ecosystem services in urban areas. And in the town's own action plan for the MBTA Communities Project, Preserving and expanding the town's street tree canopy is listed as a non-housing characteristic important to Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if everyone wants my hand up, the, uh, we have the, one. The Thank you so much. Here. So, hello, I'm Ryan McBride. I'm a member of the Open Space Committee, and I'm on the Conservation Commission. And just address two, please. Oh, sorry, 36 Eastern Avenue. Thank you. Thanks for having time. Um, so thank you to the working group for all the hard work and your countless hours. And I know it hasn't been easy. We think um, we're, we're um, proud as citizens for everything that you've done. And we think we're on the right track to a good plan. Uh, I think the addition that you're hearing from uh, myself and my colleagues in um, um, uh, Green Arlington, Green Street Arlington, is that the environmental the habitat, the street uh, canopy pieces, still missing. So I think that is the addition. We are supporters of additional housing. I probably can't say that too many times because there's concern about um, concern about the environment being a, a cover for nimbyism, and that's really not the case. We really want housing to be built in Arlington. We just want it to be done in an environmentally and habitat sensitive way. Um, my assignment uh, for the group today is to talk about setbacks, as you can see from the handout. And I just maybe if we could just kind of flip through this quickly together. Um, anybody else see one? So um, we got on our bicycles the other day. <laughs> we drove down Mass Ave and we took a number of pictures of different setbacks along Mass Ave primarily. And it's really interesting that Winnell also uh, kind of stumbled upon um, the Kentwood. Because uh, that was one of the first places we went to. Obviously, it's got a big setback, right? 30 feet or more. Um, beautiful big tree, uh, green space, um, lots of shade. It was a hot day. It was much cooler walking past the tent. But, um, further, further down, um, we saw um, other buildings that had only 25 foot setbacks. And some of the great examples of this are uh, the corner of Mill Street and Mass Ave, um, so called Old Bio Building. Um, uh, the um, um, assisted living facility in the heights beautiful 25 foot setback full of trees uh, accessible to the public uh, sunrise living um, and there's also a similar building uh 264 mass app which has a really lovely manicured 25 foot setback in brian's world this is this would be the place to live right it's like it's got a lovely setback it's populated with trees it feels green it's got public access to some degree um my deal maybe this is a challenge uh, as you dial the dial on setback further, we're getting into the 20 and 15 foot uh, setbacks. And this is where it becomes, in my view, fringe, right? You're, you're, you can see in these buildings, they do have trees. Some of them are a bit clipped. Some of them are a bit small. They are providing shade. Uh, it does allow space for manicured um, and, uh, lawns and shrubs, but you're really on the, on the fringe. Um, and if we listen to our tree warden, this 15 foot mark here, is really the minimum for a successful tree. It doesn't matter whether it's in a setback or on the street, 15 feet, think about a 15 foot uh, parking space, that, that could be a problem. When we get to 10 and zero feet, it's a place I wouldn't want to live. This has a very harsh urban feel, it's not comfortable, it's hot, um, it doesn't meet the criteria I feel, which is incorporating care for the habitat, the streets and the tree canopy into our plan. 
Um, I just finished with the story. It's funny that Bonnell also went to Kentwood. I, we went there too. And as we stopped, it was a very hot day. We stopped under the big shade tree. There were three people sitting on a little stone wall on the corner of the lot. Um, we were looking around. They were, what are you guys doing? We, we told them about setbacks. And we started talking about climate change and uh, temperature rise. We had a 15 minute conversation with people we wouldn't have met and wouldn't have engaged with if it wasn't for this environment created by the setback to the tree. Isn't that what we want for Arlington? Isn't that how we want to connect with our neighbors and knit the community together? I think setback isn't just an architectural term. It's a way of life, and I think it's important to include in the back. Your time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Please. Um, uh, Alan Jones, 1 Lehigh Street, uh, Precinct 14, Tommy, the member of Finance Committee. None of that matters. Um, tell me if I'm talking too loud. So we, <laughs> you know, we, we understand uh, talking to members of the working group and the board and the department that there are things that I think many of us would like to have, um, but can't be can't be required, but could potentially be incentivized with things like extra stories or maybe FAR and maybe that's a relevant part, of whatever. And I'm going to suggest six things that could potentially be uh, that I'd like the board to consider for incentivized or bonuses. And uh, only one, maybe two are about setbacks. Um, they all add to the natural spaces, reduce heat islands, uh, manage stormwater runoff. And to me, most importantly is, is to try to encourage the new homes to not be second class developments. We want the new neighbors who are moving in to have the same quality of life that we all enjoy. So, you know, we don't want lesser things. So, number one, larger setbacks. I do want to, uh, you know, maybe 20, 25 feet. I do want to say a 10 foot setback sort of says you can't put a decent shade tree there. You don't have the option. 20 foot setback, you can't force them to put in a tree, but it allows them to put in a tree. And every developer knows that trees add value to the building. I just looked it up. Three and a half to 50% value by adding trees to the property. It lets them put in trees. 10, 10 foot says you can't have a tree there, not a decent tree. So incentive for larger setbacks. On the public spaces, if there are setbacks, an easement for public access to allow these mini parks, parklets, little pedestrian refuges, cyclist refuges, maybe a bench or two and a trash can and a nice big shade tree, but a place for people to stop and relax, a place for the neighbors to have little informal gatherings, sit around, have a little picnic. Three, planning and maintenance of native trees, shrubs, and other perennials, particularly if they're in a designated wildlife or pollinator corridor, which I know the town's working on to be able to define, this is a wildlife corridor, this is a pollinator corridor. So those are particularly critical places. Four, green parking lots potentially require or give an incentive for at least 50% shade tree canopy to shade the parking lot or a photovoltaic, permeable surfaces to control rain and stormwater runoff. Reducing the size of open parking lots to reduce heat islands through structured parking or underground parking within the footprint of the building, and then incentives or bonuses for additional green space in the large developments. Just if they have the room, let them do it, give them some sort of incentive for that. That's it. That's all six. Only one and a half of setbacks. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Please. Hi. Thanks. I'm Mary Ellen Arano. I'm at 22 Addison Street. I'm the co-chair of the Arlington Tree Committee. I'm also a town meeting member of Precinct 8. Tonight I'm speaking as part of Green Streets Arlington. As Susan mentioned, we're a group advocating for tree canopies, helping streetscapes and open space to be part of these MTA communities districts. Currently we see there's important gaps in the plan with regard to Green Streets, open space and tree canopy. And we think the town must include these natural concerns when developing these districts. We ask the town to commit to expand current laws in place today, which are already mitigating climate forward policies. We ask that the town is mindful of its long range plans to enhance Arlington's ecology and climate resilience and bring a package to town meeting in tandem with the new MBTA communities districts. The town can be successful at expanding Arlington's built environment with new multifamily housing and enhanced tree canopies, healthy streetscapes, and open space. A few current, uh, a few uh, zoning requirements which are right for expanding to apply to residential, multi-use, and planned unit districts, are not just and not just in the business industrial zones. 
um, that we could apply today. The first is the example that you already mentioned tonight, the site development standard 6.3.2, which are were added to the zoning in 2020. Shade tree coverage along main corridors. Uh, requirement addresses heat island effects, enhanced public health and walkability with proper shading. The law provides for where there is no suitable location within the public way that shade trees may be proposed in locations within the setback as determined by the tree work. And there's currently programs in town where we do this. Another is the screening and space buffer requirement in zoning section 5.2.7 which require a screen of plantings to be maintained between properties. These and potentially other modest modifications in current zoning are examples which already include provisions to help mitigate climate change, moderate heat islands, and enrich Arlington's natural streetscapes. Expanding these works toward filling the gaps currently present in the overlay district plan it could be within a package to town meeting in tandem with the new NBA district zoning. Town can be accessible at both, and we really thank you for all your work. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Please. Okay. Keith Schnebley, I live at 78 Webb Cowett Road in Arlington. I am the other co chair of the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, first of all, I'm pretty sure it's true of everybody in here. Everybody in this town, except for some of the employees, are very dedicated citizens, right? Like the tree committee is, what you guys are doing, it's really impressive that the town runs on this, right? Um, so I really appreciate the work. Um, I'm on the tree committee because the mission of the tree committee is to promote, to promote the protection, planting, and care of trees in Arlington. I believe in this mission deeply. So you know where I'm coming from to start with, but um, I'm an IT guy. Like data really matters, getting things right really matters to me. And over the course of um, the last three years, I had a lot of opportunity to work at home. There was a tremendous storm in Arlington in 2021, I'm pretty sure it was. And I was wondering how much rain fell. And I went on you know, one of the sites and I could just get Logan. It was like an inch and a half, but it was also a trash day. And I had a barrel that had no top on it out in the open and it had four inches of rain in it. Turns out you can find weather stations that are very low and track them. I've been doing them for the last three years. In 2021, we had 40 inches of rain, which is about average year of rainfall. A lot of heavy rains over three inches. In 2022, we had a drought. We only got seven inches of rain in four months. Over the course of that time, between that and this year, we've actually lost 67 of our trees. This year, we've had 13 inches of rain, 13 and a third in the last month and three weeks. And we've had last year, 28 days of nine degrees or more. This year we're up to seven. These things really worry me. And I really think that it's important that we consider this as we look to, to the future. What we were worried about 20 years ago is coming into focus now. The atmosphere is warmer, there's longer dry periods, it's hotter, when it rains, it rains hard. In our town, um, Claire, I don't know if you want to look at this, but we do have a GIS map that shows the heat islands in the town. If you overlay your districts, it's a very close match. And the reason is because Mass Ave has been built up over the years. There are not trees in that area. And what we want to do as a tree committee is encourage the ability to plant trees in that area, especially along where you know, so that where you have pavement, macadam, sidewalks, buildings that are made of stone that are heat absorbing, that you have the ability to plant trees in front of those and absorb the heat in those areas. So there were some really good ideas here tonight. You know, can we put ad big planters in front of these buildings? Could we have the setbacks? Well, now your idea about an eight story building that's 30 feet back doesn't have the same impact and it allows a lot of room, right? Um, I think we need to do the housing. I think it'd be really good if we had a clean plan that could pass town meeting so we can be on that, you know, fossil fuel cutting edge. And I think if we can also increase the tree canopy, these were all things that are going to be doing to enhance our climate resilience in town. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak this evening? Go ahead. Okay. <coughs> 
Uh, I'm Chuck Carney, uh, 2 Kimball Road in Arlington. Um, first, thank you for everything that you've done and that you're doing. I didn't realize it needed to continue, so that's good. Thank you for the 3D map. And I know you're balancing a ton of different perspectives. Uh, the pro housing, the just compliance, you know, and you know, the green space. And I'm here by two points. The first is to reinforce the green space, uh, particularly the setbacks. You know, I was there last meeting, as you guys may know, and the 10 foot setback wasn't uh, sufficient for a tree. And I don't think that's the best move. Um, you know, my take is to make it sufficient for the tree for all, all the reasons that the tree committee and others have said. Um, and you know, but, I, but I, I look at the number, the 719 map, you're at 20,000 potential units. And I know the reality is gonna be less than that, but that's, you know, 10 times what the base requirement is from the state. And I know we're gonna do more than, we're gonna do more than the base. But my, my uh, comment is, if we've got room for 20,000 units in this current map, give or take, then that's, that seems to me, just doing the math, if it's a volume thing, that we may have some ability to uh, increase setbacks and therefore include you know, more of the green space. So that's, that's my, my first point. The second point is on the incentives, there's three incentives, um, is the, uh, the mixed use, the affordable housing and the green space. So there's two points brought up, I think one by the committee, one by UTEAL that I just want to emphasize. The first is um, that by the committee, these incentives may actually compete with each other so that a developer plays the game and then they optimize a one, I don't know which one, but more than likely the hype one. So that's something that I think merits some analysis or scenario planning or something. <coughs> Um, and then the second, and Util brought this up, and we've talked about it, the, uh, the unintended consequences of some of these incentives, um, e.g. empty storefronts. And we've seen some of this in, in Cambridge, where if you go down to Sherman Street, where Massey Hardware used to be, there was a development with the front, with the first store that was a cafe, it was supposed to be a cafe for a good two years, it never happened, and now it's a preschool, which is fine, but I think what we want to be careful of is just empty storefronts. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? All right, seeing no other hands, we will close open forum and move to agenda item number four, which is uh, new business. And I'll turn it over to you, Claire, and see if there's anything that you have on your list to the board. Yeah, so um, I do have one thing I'd like to talk about uh, this evening, and that is the timing of the town meeting, um, which seems to be, um, the select board seems to be sort of uh, uh, circling uh, around trying to land on a date. Um, and I think initially folks were thinking October 16th. Um, there has been some change to that thinking, um, and I, I believe we may um, opt for a date, perhaps October 23rd, perhaps um, something um, after uh, the um, override election. It's completely up to the select board, but again, we don't have the date for fall town meeting at this point. What we do have is an opportunity for us to submit our zoning to the state um, early uh, for, a, for a review, uh, pre-adoption review is what they call it, um, for a certain amount of time before uh, we go to town meeting. Um, I think it is an excellent opportunity for us to get this, uh, to get our ideas, to get our zoning, really um, our mostly baked um, project in front of the state to see how we are complying, if we are complying, um, and how they are sort of viewing our district. Um, for us to get this pre-approval compliance will mean on the back end, we can go that much more quickly through the NBTA community's process with the state for them to certify our plan um, and also with the AG's office um, for them to ultimately certify our zoning by February 11th, which is the deadline um, for us to participate in the fossil fuel pilot. Um, that's really the only new business I have. I think dates are still a little up in the air, but you know, much like the zone, we're finally closing in on some of the details and um, I will uh, give any updates as I get them. Thank you. Great, thank you, Claire. Uh, any yes. questions? Yeah, just gonna go to the board for any questions. So what Claire just shared. When do you think we'll be ready to get them? pre-approval, whatever, from the state? 
I am hoping to get to send the state a package by the third week of August. One of the things we didn't discuss tonight that will be helpful to know to put that package together, I think, is to what extent is the MBTA community zoning going to like stand by itself? And what extent is it going to say? And other than this, you rely on the current zoning bylaw. And we haven't had that discussion, but I think it would be helpful to know that sometime before you go to the state. Sure, um, understood. And um, this evening, uh, or actually this afternoon, I sent some draft zoning language um, to, to, to Laura and to Steve on the working group um, so that we can get that piece of it underway, that drafting the actual language. And I did see your email um, to Doug. We will be going through, you know, and trying to figure out where we can take advantage of, you know, existing zoning by saying it does or does not apply or where we would have to write, you know, new conditions. Any other questions, Jim? Yeah. Um, we were going to follow up and see how this MBT communities work with inclusionary housing? Uh, have we? Yes, James, you want to fill in Kid yeah, on the I, email um, you sent to Doug? I emailed Doug, and he um, says we can do it, and he's trying to figure out the best way to do it. So, by doing MBT communities overlay, then since we're not having uh, stuff. Special permit. We can still do it. We still require it because. Uh, yeah, two things. We can still require it. Doug is trying to figure out what's the best way to require it in the zoning model. But the other thing is, our inclusionary zoning is 15%. The state only allows 10% unless we put in some sort of study that shows 15% works. So we can do it. We need the study. And then Doug will give us the exact wording for that. Okay. Now That's correct. Okay. And if we as a board want to go 15%, we're going to somehow try to prove that it is not hindrance to, uh, to development. To development. Correct. And how we how do we do that? We do an economic feasibility analysis, or we can do what Lexington did, which is say we intend to use our inclusionary zoning unless DHCD says that it's not feasible, in which case we will revert to the 10%. I do not want to do that. I don't think that we need to do that in our zoning, but we do need to perform an economic feasibility analysis to ensure that 15% doesn't make anything unbuildable. Given the fact that we have 40 Bs in this town where they do 25% and still manage to successfully develop projects. I'm not sure that 15% will be so onerous, but the economic feasibility analysis would determine that. And we've had a number of projects with 15%. Correct. So, yeah. Right. Could I ask you a question around that? Is that something sure. that the department can perform and that would be acceptable? Do they require a third party? And what are your thoughts on the timing for that? Is that a commitment to do an economic feasibility study or does it have to be complete? So that's a great question. I think it's a little of both. I think it's a commitment to do the study. Mm -hmm. I think that it is, um, I would like for the department to be able to certify it on their own, but I would have to see what the state um, yep. you know, requires on that. Um, for me, it's, it, well, for, me, for, for the department, it, it, it really is a, a, a slam dunk. I mean, this is obviously development that we've been doing successfully mm -hmm. for years. Um, and, you know, just I think evidence of that uh, is more than enough, but we'll have to see what they require. And just to clarify, we're going to ask for the same AMI as we currently have in our inclusionary zone. 70%? I hope so. 60%. 60. 60%. 60. Right. I no, just want to confirm that. that. That's what we thought. 70% for homeownership. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the intent was to not change, you yeah. know, from what is currently exactly. right. that was our being developed. Yes. Any other questions for Claire on the pre-approval or timing? Um, so that's something that we'll keep in close contact with Eric um, yes. Helmuth from the select board about. Um, I So that the board knows, I'm going to um, send him the list, the list that keeps growing, <laughs> of um, our non-MBTA communities or MBTA communities supportive 
separate um, warrant articles uh, so that the select board has a preview of those as well. And I'll also, again, let him know that the 23rd of October is um, a preferred date of the, of the board a little bit later so that we can get the feedback from the state, make any modifications, hold the hearings, and then present to the meeting. Great. Any other new business from any board members hurting this Steve? Gene? Ken? I don't have any other. Is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. I'll second. We'll take the vote starting with Steve. Yes. Ken? Yes. Gene? Yes. And I'm the yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you all. You all.